begin end code sections. There's also support for uh, Haddock documentation, although I have to say that because of the recent changes in Haddock, this is a bit out of date, and so uh, hopefully when we have a few more revisions to Haddock, we can uh, port what they've done over, and it will be a very accurate translation of, say, Markdown to Haddock, and it will be a little easier to do um, documentation. All right, so that's the demonstration of uh, Pandoc as a command line program. Now, um, what I want to do in the rest of uh, today's uh, class is to talk about how you could use Pandoc in your Haskell programs. So I'm going to give you a brief tour of the Pandoc API. So you can see what's there and see how you might uh, use it. And I'm also going to tell you how you can write filters in, in Pandoc, such as the one I already showed you, which is uh, Pandoc SiteProc that does the citation process. So the first thing to look at is uh, the readers and writers. The readers parse things into an intermediate format and the writers called Pandoc and the writers convert that to other formats. And everything you need here is in text.pandoc. Um, so if you look at that, uh, you've got uh, read media wiki, read RST, read org, and so on. And they all are functions from reader options and a string to a Pandoc. And the reader options are things like you want smart quotes. Okay, then you've got some writers, write HTML string, write ICML, and so on. And th mostly those are functions from writer options and pandoc to string. Although there are a couple that have to live in I.O. Um, so that's uh, the basics. And um, go back. So just as a, a I guess I... I thought I had an example of, of actually using that, but uh, I don't. But it's, it's really pretty trivial. You just uh, take your input string, you use the reader on it, and then use the writer on the result of that to get your output. Very easy to do that. Um, really what I want to show you is the types, the underlying types themselves. So these are in text.pandoc.definition. And uh, one thing you have to know is that this lives in a separate uh, package, uh, not pandoc, but pandoc types. And the reason for that is I wanted to make it possible for other people to do things that uh, gave you stuff with the pandoc types without having to include this gigantic library into their stuff. Um, so here it is. A pandoc is, uh, consists of uh, metadata and a list of blocks. Metadata is this structured thing, so it's a map. Uh, it's basically kind of like a JSON object, but with... Uh, Can you explain the text a little? Yeah, thanks. Or I could turn off the lights. Is this going to work? That looks great to me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so um, what I've done here is I've kind of mimicked the types that you have in JSON or YAML, except instead of strings, I've got uh, Pandoc types. Then um, here's a block. A block can be a plane, a paragraph, which is just a bunch of inlines. It could be a code block, block quote, which contains blocks under it, various kinds of lists, a header, horizontal rule, a table, or there's also a div, which is like a generic container for blocks. And then there's inline elements, and those are just str, a string is just a regular text, but there's emphasis, there's strong emphasis. Quoted text, we need to represent that in the types because some output formats have special treatment of that, like docbook. Uh, a space, um, math. Raw inline is uh, something that you're saying, this is just a bit of raw HTML or something. Links, images, so all the, all the stuff you have in your typical mark. Uh, markdown or markup language. Okay, and I've used uh, lists here. Um, in retrospect, I don't think that's the wisest decision, and if I were doing it now, I'd probably use sequences because sequences uh, are better when you concatenate two together, and that's something you want to do quite a bit. Um, but when I was starting, I didn't know better. Uh, I used strings, and I wish I'd used text, but when I was starting, there wasn't text, and now it's just a big refactoring job to put in text, but it would be great if someone would do that. <laughs> um, 
So, th so that's, that's the basic uh, types there. Um, now, um, if you want to explore these types and you already know Markdown or HTML, you could just use pandoc to native or pandoc from native and you can see what the native uh, representation of some Markdown would look like. And so that's a good way to just sort of explore around and figure out what these types are all about. Now, as I mentioned, concatenating lists is slow, and so I eventually added this builder library, which is a convenient way to build up pandoc uh, data structures without uh, just literally writing what you'd write in the definition. So let's take a look at that. Uh, there's a bunch of examples there. Um, basically what it does is it wraps up uh, a sequence of inlines into a thing I call inlines and a sequence of blocks into a thing I call blocks. Okay, so underneath it's a sequence and so they concatenate fast. And I've actually got some custom uh, monoid instances for them so that when you concatenate two sequences and there's two emphasis right next to each other, you'll just get normalized one emphasis and so on. Um, but let me, uh, and so then there's little constructors for all the different things that you might want to do. So let me give you an example of what that looks like. Um, let's see. Um, actually, I worked out a little example for you. So suppose um, your, your boss says, I want a letter in Microsoft Word document that lists all the gas stations in Chicago that take the Voyager card and that have compressed natural gas. So you find on the net this uh, data source which has um, all the stations in Chicago area that have compressed natural gas. And this is a JSON document. So you say, okay, well, I'm not going to fire up Microsoft Word. I'm just going to use Pandoc. So here's a little program that'll do it. And this uses Builder, and it'll also show you how you can work with JSON uh, in, in uh, Haskell. I'm using the ASUN library here. Um, so we define a station. It's just a record. Uh, probably want that bigger. Big enough? It's got an address, a name, and a list of cards accepted. Uh, we define an instance of from JSON, which tells how to parse that. And um, you know, the, the code is really pretty straightforward once you get used to that. Um, we've got a function that creates a letter from a list of stations. And here's where we, we use builder. So builder, we say doc. And then um, builder, everything's a monoid. So I use uh, map end, which is that thing, uh, to concatenate stuff together. So first paragraph, dear boss. Now, of course, um, really what goes in a paragraph is an inline. But I've defined um, um, uh, an instance of is string so that you can just write a string. Here we have overloaded strings. You can just write a string and it will convert it to a list of inlines and spaces. Okay, so paragraph, dear boss. Paragraph, here are the CNG stations that accept Voyager cards. Simple table, here's the headers. First we want uh, station, then address, then cards accepted. And then here's the body. These are the rows of the table. So uh, for each station, there'll be a row. So we map the stations, uh, we map the stations using uh, the function station to row. Then we have an image for the signature. Station to row says um, the first column is going to be the name of the station, the second column, the address, and the third column is something that we get from uh, taking all the cards accepted, which is a list, and um, putting line breaks in between. That's what interspersed does. Okay, so then the main program just says, we'll read the files of byte string, that's the, the JSON data. We decode the JSON, and if we get something, we get a list of stations. We, uh, here's a list comprehension, we take all the stations where the Voyager card is one of the cards accepted, and we create letter on those stations. Um, then we use write docx, which is Pandoc's writer, um, with def, the default options on that letter, and we write the file. So let's try this thing. Um, let's see, where are we? We need to get to terminal. So, um, right, so I, I showed you the file, and now we're just going to run it. Uh, fuel. Oh, I guess I have it up here.
Okay, let's see what the letter looks like. There it is. Okay, so you never have to use Microsoft Word again. <laughs> Unless someone makes you use change tracking, that's, that's a different matter. Okay, um, so back to, uh, back to the presentation. So that's Builder. Builder's really useful. I don't think a lot of people know about Builder, but, but I think it's, it's a nice way to make documents. It's sort of like, you know, we have Blaze HTML for making HTML documents, but in a way this is much more flexible because you make a document and then you can write it in any format. Now we have a few functions in Pandoc types that are uh, about transforming a document. So you've got a Pandoc structure which represents a document and you want to make some changes on it. So suppose you want to take all the emphasis and make it into strong emphasis or something like that. So we have two modules that deal with this. And the first one that was added was uh, text pandoc generic. And this uses the scrap your boiler, boilerplate SYB library um, to do generic transformations. And so it provides just these four functions. Uh, let me enlarge them for you. So what bottom up does is uh, t take any type that's a member of data and all the pandoc types in line and so on are, but so is string, for example. And um, take a function from, from an A to an A, say from an inline to an inline, and it'll promote that to a function uh, from a B to a B, where B is any other data. So B could be, for example, a pandoc type. So we could take an inline to inline function and make it into a pandoc to a pandoc function. So if you write a function that converts a emph inline into a strong emph inline, this will convert that into something that takes a whole pandoc document, finds all the emphs in it, and converts them to strong emph. So there's bottom down and top up, and that just is a different order of traversing the tree, which can matter in a few cases. Um, there's also a monadic version of bottom up, and there's a, a query thing which that's good for things like go through a pandoc document, give me all the URLs. Okay, so that's, um, that's generic. And what happened is, I mean, generic is actually kind of slow. So I wrote, eventually when I decided I wanted to be using a lot of these filters that do these kind of transformations, I wrote, I just hand coded uh, some functions that did the same thing uh, that, that are much faster than the ones in generic. Okay, so they're a bit less flexible, but if you can use one of these, walk, walk, m, or query, um, you'll have better uh, performance. So let me give you an example of how you'd use walk. So first, here's a small module. Can everyone see that okay? Um, I guess I can't change the size, but all caps. And what this does is it, it defines a function from an inline to an inline. If the inline is a string, it just capitalizes the string. Otherwise, it leaves it the same. So that's all that all caps does. You can test that out in GHCI. So I'm going to use, I use here the function walk from the walk module. I say walk all caps, and then um, the thing that I'm going to walk will be this paragraph here, which contains uh, an emphasized string, uh, and I'll get a paragraph with the emphasized string capitalized. Okay? Everyone see how that works? Fairly simple. Now, if you have a program that defines a transformation from a pandoc to a pandoc, then if you think about it, you could write a pipe, like a Unix pipe type thing. So take um, f, read will convert a string into a pandoc structure, then you convert that to another pandoc with f, and then you show to convert that back to a string. Interact will make that function from a string to a string into a program that reads from standard input and writes to standard output, so a pipe. So this little program here could be used as a pipe. We generate um, native code from pandoc. Native is just a string representation of the pandoc document. We run it through our little pipe, and then we read from native and write, say, LaTeX, and we could, we could use that to do something like um, capitalize all the words like we said. But that's really inefficient because read and show are kind of slow. 
So it turns out to be much faster to use JSON serialization that you get from something like the ASIM library. And so I added a, a JSON output and input to Pandoc. So um, what we want is a filter that will read uh, JSON of serialization of Pandoc and spit out a transform JSON serialization, so a program like that. And then we can use it as a pipe uh, like so, and that would be much faster. That's a common pattern, so I added the filter option. And so uh, if you want to convert Markdown to LaTeX, but filter this thing through a JSON filter, FJ JSON, you could write that, and it'll do the same thing as the line up above. Okay, so remember when I ran pandoc siteproc, I used the filter option, it was the same thing. And to make it easy to write these JSON filters, I wrote um, a little thing, uh, text pandoc JSON. This gives you a function um, to JSON filter. And to JSON filter will take you, uh, will, will give you, uh, sorry, there's a type class really. Um, type class is capital to JSON filter. And it has a method to JSON filter, which will take a member of that type class 